Yo. Cute and kawaii music. Today we're going to be learning about cute and kawaii future bass music. It's like future bass and it's also like kawaii Japanese music, but they combine together to make this weird combination of, I don't know, it's like, it's not future bass, because I would say future bass is like. Nor is it Japanese J pop. But there's a lot of overlap between these two genres. It shares a lot of the same qualities. I used the word cute to describe this style of music because a lot of the individual sounds make me go, ah, like a small puppy barking or hitting a xylophone with a tiny little beater or video game samples that strike up a sense of nostalgia. I use the word kawaii because it means the same thing, but in Japanese. So it's kind of redundant, actually, because you're saying, I don't care. But in all seriousness, the use of the same word, but then in like two different languages, kind of just highlights the fact that it can be from the Western or Eastern part of the globe, and it really doesn't have to come from only one place. For more examples, you can check out artists like Snail's House, Nitro Fun, Hyper Potions, Dark Cat, Sean Wasabi, You Know Me, Grim Pet, Grim Pret, Grind, Pirate, literally any artist listed here. There'll be many examples throughout this video, but even outside of this video, you may have already heard of such songs being played by artists such as Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to tell you anymore. Just listen. We're gonna break this down into three segments. We got sound design. Two, it's music theory, because that's just important. Also, this video is filled with tons of cultural references. Let's start with sound design. This journey started off with a live stream where I remade Snail's House. Ooh, cool. Yeah. Oh. Someone said this needs more memes. I agree. Hey, pretty good. <laughs> Could you actually fax that sample? This is the meme snare. I don't know, maybe a little less distortion. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in to my Minecraft stream. I think I'm running out of memes. I'm out of tea. This stream is over. From this remake, I created a good collection of sounds that could be used for my own cute and kawaii music. But that was not enough. We had to take it one step further. To find all the right sounds, we went on a quest. Hey. Hey. 
What up, guys? Hey, what up, guys? Today we're gonna be recording stuff. I don't know what kind of stuff, but we're gonna find out. Hey, come on. Let's let's go record stuff. Give me a beat. Afterwards, we found out there was tons of noise in the recording, which sucked, but I used RX from my isotope to remove the noise. Once we were done recording sounds, we needed a way to be able to use them. I imported the samples into Edison so I could create markers by every note. Edison allows you to export these segments separately. I then loaded them into Direct Wave and put the samples by the right note. This way I had a sampler and I could create new melodies and chords. Melodies and chords. Let's talk about music theory for a moment. I don't want to get too technical, not only because I don't have a perfect understanding of music theory, but there are many others in that very same boat. I've studied a few of these chord progressions, so I'll do my best to explain what the heck is going on. So here we have two different types of chords. We have major chords, and we have minor chords. And if we compare them together by putting them on the same note, we can see that the shape is very similar between a major and a minor chord. This is a major chord. This is a minor chord. And the only difference here is this middle note. And this note up here, which we call the fifth, that's always the same between a major and minor chord. So this major chord has three spaces, while this minor chord has two. But then this has two spaces up here and three spaces up here. So that's like the pattern that you can see. You can tell a major chord, minor chord, just by looking at it. These major minor chords only have three notes, but you can add more notes, which add more flavor, more color, and make it a richer, fuller sound. And we continue the pattern. Here we had a space of three, and then two. So we'll add another three here. And then here we had a two, three, so we'll go two here. From these triads that we've had, we've made major 7th and minor 7 chords. Don't have to start right there, we can continue on this pattern of 3-2, three, 3, well then we'll do another 2. And you don't have to keep them in this pattern, you can select some and then decide to put them down an octave. That D up there has gone down here now rearranging the notes so that they're still the same notes, just in a different octave, will create a different, slightly different texture to your chord. We've duplicated the root notes, these bass notes down here, but we don't have to keep them in the same place as the chords up here. We can put them on a different note and see what happens. Through my research, I found out that you can often replace this bass note with a fourth or second. B or the G in this case. Another interesting thing here, again, we have another fifth. Like when I was explaining the chords earlier, we had these different chords, the C major and the C minor, but 
didn't matter if it was major or minor, this fifth up here would stay the same distance. But we see here again, the distance is the same. Which means that you can create a dominant chord out of this chord here. You don't have to, but you can, and it creates another interesting sound. If you look here to this area, you'll see another common occurring progression where the chords will go down. This happens a lot. And it's like, if you don't even have this, then I don't know what type of music you're making, but it isn't cute and it isn't kawaii. I can tell you that for sure. These notes are coming down. They almost look identical to each other. In fact, yeah, I would say that's pretty much identical. Like the same chord just being uh, shifted. Here is a simplified version. Two of the same chords, but then just put down two notes. And in between, we have a connecting chord just like in the last example, and we've made the dominant chord again. But it doesn't have to stay up here. We can put it down here, so it's going in between the chords now. You can be a bit flexible and creative with this. As long as it sounds good, then I think you can get away with it. Okay, okay, so we've learned enough about music theory. We've, we've learned plenty about sound design. I think now we're ready to put those elements together and make our very own cute kawaii future bass track. <laughs> Hit it.